Thank you so much for tuning into my channel. My name is Craig Farlinger, and this is Things We Know For Sure. Today's topic is super positive, something we should all be celebrating, but at the same time it has a dark negative side that has revealed corruption at the highest levels in our Western societies. What I mean by knowing something for sure is just the standard accepted quantitative definition scientific research that has been peer-reviewed, published in a professional journal, and replicated. I have a Bachelor of Science degree, but this channel is not about explaining science. It's about the unappreciated ramifications of established scientific findings. Today's scientific topic has been largely ignored and far from celebrated like it should. This is a finding that has been confirmed over and over again since the first SARS outbreak in Asia in 2003, throughout the current pandemic, through the Delta and Omicron waves. To be balanced in my reporting, I want to make it clear that the data I'm going to present clearly shows that if you haven't had COVID-19 before, then vaccination significantly reduces your risk of hospitalization, severe disease, and death. This is not an anti-vaxxer video. To further avoid being cancelled, I'm going to repeat exactly what podcasters and scientists have said on YouTube previously and not been censored for it. Now I'm going to read some of this because I don't want to make a mistake. I want to make sure it's exact. The dates, the publications, and the quotes are exact. With regards to the published Israeli data, which included the Delta wave, the podcaster Dr. Campbell reported in a YouTube video on February 27, 2022, that the studies show, I quote, how much better natural immunity is than vaccine-induced immunity, and it seems to last much, much longer, end quote. With regards to the United States CDC data, from two of the largest SARS-CoV-2 databases from California and New York, Dr. Campbell reported in a YouTube video on January 24, 2022, that, I quote, For people who have had a previous infection, whether they are vaccinated or not, the vaccination is not further reducing their risk of hospitalization. Here is the CDC California data on hospitalization hazard that Dr. Campbell analyzed. You can see the line at the top, which is the risk of hospitalization for unvaccinated people who have never had COVID-19 previously. When I zoom in, you can clearly see at the bottom here that natural immunity is superior to vaccinated immunity alone, and vaccinating the previously infected does not significantly reduce the risk. Here is the New York data, where there is an even wider gap between those only vaccinated and the previously infected. When I zoom in, you can clearly see that this New York data also replicates the California finding of no added protection from vaccination for the previously infected. The hybrid immunity and natural immunity lines at the bottom are substantially overlapping. Campbell also interviewed Dr. Stefan Pilz, an MD, PhD in endocrinology and biostatistics, consultant in internal medicine, and associate professor in the Department of Medicine at Graz in Austria. He is the lead author on a scientific review of natural immunity published February 8, 2022 by the NIH. In that interview, dated February 17, 2022, Dr. Pilz said, I quote, even more than 390 days after your first infection, you do have a significant protection in the range of 87%. So we know that with natural immunity, you get a high protection against reinfection and also against severe disease. And this is lasting for more than one year. He continues, and I quote, At the moment with the Omicron wave, we see that this protection from natural immunity really works because we have a lower proportion of hospitalization and deaths. We should be very happy about this, end quote. I'm not going to review all the data supporting natural immunity because it's a huge amount of research. I urge my viewers to check out the science for themselves, starting with Dr. Campbell's wonderful podcast. So as of the date of this video, 
and according to a universally accepted scientific quantitative definition, we know for sure from published research and epidemiological data that natural immunity to COVID-19 has been superior to vaccine-induced immunity in duration, infection, hospitalization, severe disease, and death. Further, we know for sure that vaccination has so far offered no significant added medical benefit to those who have recovered from COVID-19, no matter how long ago they were infected. And we shouldn't be surprised by these findings. We've known about the existence of naturally acquired immunity to viral infections for a long time. Vaccination uses the same biological mechanisms. We've also known that natural immunity to SARS viruses exists because of research published after the first SARS outbreak in Asia in 2003. It's also easy enough to track people who recover from COVID-19 in order to reconfirm it. We never had any reason to doubt it. Yet people in charge decided to ignore it, not measure the risk, and to behave like natural immunity doesn't exist. Several other facts follow from these scientific facts. Firstly, the vaccination of the previously infected has no significant medical benefit for them, nor a social benefit of reducing the spread of the virus. The recovered already have better protection against the risks of illness than vaccination alone. Vaccinating them was unnecessary. It was a violation of the Hippocratic Oath regarding unnecessary medical treatments because the vaccines are not without risk. I urge people to read this foundational ethical pledge that our physicians were previously required to follow. Secondly, the disparagement of natural immunity by healthcare leaders, scientists, and physicians was disinformation that appeared prominently in mainstream media. These disinformation campaigns morphed into hype for hybrid immunity by calling it super immunity. Based on a single study, it's a misleading term because the super is almost entirely due to the natural immunity component. Thirdly, including the previously infected among the unvaccinated unjustly subjected them to hate. We all know Justin Trudeau's famous declaration that the unvaccinated are racist and misogynist, but he is not the only one who ignorantly derogated the previously infected. There was a nasty amount of hate directed at people who had suffered through this disease. Fourthly, and most concerning of all, the previously infected were unjustly fired from their jobs and had their freedoms restricted to coerce vaccination. This is a gross violation of human rights according to the United Nations Universal Declaration of Human Rights. I urge people to read this document because more than a few articles were violated by governments around the world. The rules in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights and the modernized Hippocratic Oath that all physicians swear to, along with following the science, are three important sources of foundational Western values that have served us well. Ironically, the previously infected and those with hybrid immunity even from a single jab of vaccine, like me, are the most protected groups who spread the virus the least. They should have been on the front lines if the intent was to stop the spread of SARS-CoV-2. So our healthcare leaders' pandemic responses included widespread hate, disinformation, violations of the Hippocratic Oath, and gross violations of human rights according to the UN Declaration. We know this occurred for sure. These are serious infractions. This isn't jaywalking. So what do we know about the harm that this caused? How many people died when governments vaccinated low-risk, previously infected individuals ahead of high-risk groups? It can only be estimated. How many of the previously infected were killed or injured by the vaccines or had their lives unjustly ruined? The CDC recently reported that 140 million Americans have recovered from COVID-19. This is speculative and needs to be independently verified. But assigning any reasonable percentage of the population to represent this group results in millions of people. Given the sheer size of this group, vaccine deaths and injuries are a statistical certainty. Many believe in the Hippocratic Oath 
and a just society with public servants who don't regularly commit gross violations of human rights. But the physicians who disparaged natural immunity lied, either willingly or out of ignorance. I don't know which is worse, because doctors are supposed to know the established medical science. Along with the remdesivir and early treatment scandals, for me, the entire healthcare system has been brought into disrepute. What needs to be done? After seeing the way the Canadian freedom truckers have been jailed and fined for protesting, it's not certain that ordinary citizens have enough power to hold accountable the politicians responsible for these violations. Laws need to be changed, but it's also uncertain if there is any political will. At this point, physicians who believe in the Hippocratic Oath and human rights need to ask the BC College of Physicians and Surgeons some hard questions about their policy work with Dr. Bonnie Henry and their persecution of previously infected doctors and healthcare workers. Whatever you think of people who choose not to get vaccinated, this unjust persecution of the previously infected was and is wrong. For those who believe in the Hippocratic Oath, the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, a just society, and following the science, remedies are required to hold the perpetrators accountable and make sure this doesn't ever happen again.